Hi there, Fall City kids. It's so good that we can be together again, even though it has to be this way. Hopefully very soon we will get to see each other and have church together again so I can see your smiling faces and give you great big hugs. Last week we had Easter and we ended with the tomb being empty. If you were with us, we made resurrection rolls and we rejoiced because the tomb is empty. And so today we're gonna to kind of talk about, all right, the tomb is empty, what now? What does that mean? So we know Jesus was crucified and died for our sins, but then they go and the tomb is empty, which means that he's been resurrected. And that is amazing because that means God keeps his promises to us. So we know that the, during the 40 days that Jesus had been resurrected and he was on the earth before his ascension, he appears to several people that we hear about in the Bible. And I'm gonna read you a verse from John chapter 20. This starts on verse 11. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus's body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. So we're going to talk about what this means. He's he appears to Mary, and even though she doesn't recognize him right away, that she then realizes that Jesus has returned just as he said he would. And we're gonna talk about what Jesus wants us to do. And I'm gonna start our little experiment and then do some talking while we're working on it. So I have a big red heart here, and that is done with um, a, just like a Crayola watercolor marker. And you can do this at home. I'm just on a piece of paper towel. This represents Jesus's love for us. Then there are some permanent marker hearts and those represent people. And we know that God left instructions through Jesus for us to spread the good news. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip the bottom of this into some water and we're going to give that just a second to start working. And while we are letting that start working, we're going to talk about the fact that over 40 days, Jesus was seen by many people. We know through scripture. We know that he ate with disciples and drank with them. He let them see his wounds and touch his body and know that he was solid. He was not just a spirit. And this is important because we know that God's promise was that Jesus would die and be resurrected and walk the earth again before he ascended into heaven. So as you can see, it's starting to work now. That water is starting to go up and the red marker is starting to spread. Just like we hope that the love of God and Jesus' love for us spreads. I can't think of a better thing to be talking about right now than what Jesus wanted us to do. Jesus left instructions with his disciples that we are to spread the good news. We are to spread God's love to other people and let them know about Jesus and the fact that God keeps his promises and that Jesus died and was buried and resurrected and then ascended into heaven. And that's so important because we know that God's word is true. And during this sort of uncertain time where people are finding new ways to do school and new ways to kind of try to keep in touch with their family and their friends, and we know that that is really hard on us, it's more important than ever that we spread the love of Jesus to others. There are a lot of people who really need to hear that right now. They need to hear that you, I know you may feel alone, but you're never really alone because you will always have the love of Jesus. So if you can kind of see that red is starting to decline and get closer and closer to my people here, right? 
So as it goes up, oh, I gotta readjust it. As it's starting to go up, we're gonna see that that red is gonna bleed upward. What's so amazing about spreading the love of Jesus to others is that I can impact a whole lot of people by just telling one or two people. When I tell other people about Jesus and the good news and then they tell someone else and that person can tell someone else, the, the love of Jesus keeps spreading. It's just sort of like those videos you see where people are doing random acts of kindness, right? They're choosing to spread Jesus' love through random acts of kindness and somebody might buy their coffee and so they turn around and do something nice for someone else and that trend continues and that's what we want to see is people spreading love i've seen lots of that with people um, reaching out to our healthcare workers right now and thanking them our grocery store workers we're so thankful for them and people reaching out getting them cookies and meals and it's really important to share Jesus is love, but also Jesus is the kindness that Jesus brought with him to others. So as you can see, now that first heart is getting covered and it's getting closer and closer to the next heart and it's gonna keep going up. So while we're watching that, we're gonna talk about why this is so, so important. I would argue that this point in the Bible is probably one of the most important points because this is how we know that God is real. This is how we know that God keeps his promises. It was prophecy that Christ would come and he would live and die and be resurrected and he would come to teach us about um, the way we're supposed to live and following God's word. It's also important that um, he followed through with God's plan and died for our sins. That's pretty amazing. Because I know I'm not perfect. I make mistakes all the time. And I'm sure you do too. And I need the love of Jesus to cover my sins so that I can go to heaven and be with God for all eternity. So we're going to take one more look. If you can see, that first heart is all covered in red. And now it's going to the second and third hearts. So we know, boys and girls, that love spreads and that's such a good thing to spread instead of something bad like a virus, right? So we want to work on that this week. I want you to think about how you can show God's love to someone else. I'm going to pray with you. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time that we get to have together. Even though it is non-traditional, we can't wait to be together again. Lord, please keep everyone healthy this week. Help them to show your love to someone else. And God, most importantly, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for his death, burial, and resurrection. Thank you, Lord, for allowing him to die to cover our sins. I can't think of a greater gift that you could have given us. Lord, and all these things, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I hope you have a great week, and I hope to see you soon. Bye!